Hello, I'm Malcolm Haslett. And I'm Janice Baker. You are. How does your life change when you have encountered an unexpected fork in the road? And what is the Independent Arts Foundation? That and more in this week's episode of Our Our Time. Time. Oh, it's great to be here once again. It is. Do you know, we've just been a month or so ago on a round of politicians here in South Australia telling us how fabulous they all are. (laughs) But I really love the expression, and we hear it from all of the politicians all around the country, about we're going to work hard to deliver whatever they're going to deliver. What's the alternative? Working soft? (laughs) It does make you wonder, though, doesn't it? (laughs) Because the opposite of working hard, we're going to work harder than the other person. Or just not work. Well, (laughs) is that working soft? What what is the expression? I love hearing that. There's so many expressions that have come into our language that make no sense whatsoever. Mm. However, today Mm. we're hoping to make sense of our very first guest, Janice. Yes, at the age of 14, Katharina was awakened to her psychic abilities and had years of negative outcomes in her 20s. And in August 2016, she created her business and now can proudly say she's living her purpose to assist and help others on their journey. Katharina, welcome to our time. Thanks for having me, Janice and Malcolm. It's a pleasure. Yeah, it's great. How would you best describe yourself? I am a positive energy that will assist others in changing their lives when they choose to move forward in their journey of self. So as a psychic, though, how how did you find this, that you could do this to help people? Well, I was 14 years old when I actually woke up to the fact that I was 14. A friend of mine had passed away, so I had experienced a really negative encounter. Yeah. And so in my teenage years, I used to be able to um, see and hear things that no other person would, you know, hear or see. So did would that, you then, sorry, Mark, no, would right. you just say to somebody, did that happen to you or was it just me that it happened to? Well, I would say things like that. But during the 80s, people would think I was a little bit... You should you have know. been a child of the 70s because yes. everyone was <laughs> talking that stuff. That's, that's, that's right. So I spent my 20s um, with it all by myself and trying to overcome my own emotional fears and, and um, lack of feeling worthy of it. And you had a bit of a difficult teenage time, did you? Yes, I did. I was um, basically left on my own to, you know, to work out where I, where I was in life. And, and at the same time, I had to find out how to deal with my psychic abilities. And that can be quite um, daunting and quite... Was it scary? Very Were scary at all. Very much so, especially when you don't have anyone around you who believes you. No. Yes. Yeah, that's an interesting point, isn't it? Who believes you? Yeah. Because I guess that must be the hardest thing, um, having these things happen to you and not really being able to explain it because nobody has, but somebody did, obviously. Well, it's you learn all, you have to learn about yourself and how you can handle things and look at your own emotional state. So at 20, by the time I was 29 years old, I, I answered an ad to another medium and I went to her seeking for help. And through her, I found my um, spiritual guidance who then helped me create a new cycle of life, which has taken 23 years to current now. Mm. Did she recognise this in you straight away? Yes, she did. Oh, okay. And it was very helpful and I spent days crying because it finally somebody believed me and, and told doing. me that I was a nuts or, mm, you know, I was mm. a freak or wasn't a freak or something. Is that what was happening before? Yeah, in my 20s, a lot of people, because okay. people don't understand, you know, if you tell them, if you walk into a room and you suddenly see a room of spirit, they all think you're a little psycho, you know. <laughs> well, now there's a good question. Um, and I guess people, everybody watching this is probably thinking this too. Uh, how do you know that you're seeing spirits? What do spirits look like? Spirit looks like it's energy. So I was taught how to identify energy because we're all made of energy. Everything starts from energy. So it's like a, a shimmer. Um, it's like little small particles, you know, like when you throw dust in the air and you put light on it and there's little particles. Mm-hmm. Well, that's energy. 
So is that how it appears? To, that's how the spirit. Yeah, that's how it started off, and then they and then they started, and then it started to form pictures and. Right. Yeah. So is this like sort of watching a TV screen when it when you've just got snow? What's called snow on the screen? You know when it's. Well, it's noise yeah, it's, called noise. Well, everyone's different on how they okay. see. Mm -hmm. um, I see. Uh, it took me five years to develop my site because I, I was mentored to organically have it um, grow naturally so it becomes like second sight. So if spirit or higher consciousness wants me to know that they're around, the, the air in front of me kind of changes. It's similar like the Matrix, you know, the movie Matrix? Yes. Yeah. yes it just simmers a little bit. Yeah. And then suddenly I might see a shadow... Um, if spirit really wants to see, really wants you to see them, they'll just come up to your face and... Is that right? And, like, I have sometimes, they, they tap me on the shoulder and, you know, I have to say, I can't do it today, sorry. Okay, because that's, that's probably... We talked to a lady not that long ago and she was explaining to us, to her, she had to learn how to turn off. Her yeah. example was you could be walking down a major street and everybody wants to talk to yes, you. You have to right. know how not to just be sort of, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, well, I, yes. Board. Well, I had to learn to not pay attention to it all, all the time because um, it can emotionally drain you. Mm, I if, imagine. If you don't, if you allow that space to come into your space all the time. Is it, does it start from the time you wake up in the morning? Is it something that's with I, For you me, all it's 24-7. Yeah. But I've learnt... Um, I've learned to be, it's part of my life now, so I'm mm. the boss. It's not the other way around. So my role is to also teach people how to, to have control in their psychic abilities and know that it's not the other way around. We are the boss. Mm. And it's their honour and their privilege to be connected to us. Because this is your time as a human? Is yes, that the... because being human is why we came here, obviously, mm. right? So to be the best... Psychic is to be the best human being because they will help you to confront everything about yourself. So Who do you find comes to you then for this sort of help? Who? Well, I have people that want, um, you know, answers of just simply how to take the next step in their lives because it's the everyday person that will change the world. And they need to learn, you need to learn how to overcome the naysayers or overcome people who are making your life difficult and understand why they're doing it. Or they come for, you know, an, an hour of hope. People okay. just want hope, knowing that everything's okay yeah. and that, um, that the decisions they're making is leading them to their, you know, end result. That's an interesting way to look yes, at it. it. I never is. thought of it in those no, terms. that's right. Yeah. So for you, how is it affecting you in your life? Is this giving you uh, perhaps more direction, do you think? Oh, it's given me direction. It's given me my self-worth back. It's given me the love for myself. It's given me um, the ability to help another person through my own experiences. Um, I walk my talk so that gives us the best way of helping another person because people like to see that you're actually doing what you're giving. Mm. It's giving me um, it, it's giving me joy. It would too if you're oh, helping it's spreading. It's beautiful. It's like, beautiful. That to, yeah. to people that obviously that need, need some it, yes. help. Yes, remember we were talking to Graham a few weeks ago, the physiotherapist, and he'd developed some techniques that um, he'd been to America. He had a feeling there was more to physiotherapy than what he'd been taught to do, so he went yeah. further with that. And really, in a way, we're talking about a similar sort of thing, I suppose, yes. with this. Well, my, when I have a person, my tools are the psychic ability or the medium because that gives me the ability to maybe go into a past life because our body carries memories of other lifetimes that we never resolved. So, so we choose to bring it into this life. So when mm. something activates you, like a um, trauma or, or a naysayer that comes along and tells you you're not worthy of anything, it'll activate a memory in your blood cell or your body. Mm. And um, the next thing you know, you're emotionally upset or something. So it's telling you that there's something that needs to be looked at. So, yes. That's well, we often, we often when we see um, a child who's really talented doing something particular 
and you feel, gee, they're an old soul, they've been here before, that we're just, as teachers, reminding them of how yeah. to do something. So yes. uh, I've seen that sort of situation a lot in life, particularly with, with children learning something that they sort of already know, you're just reminding them how to do it properly. Yes, that's right. Interesting. And, and my role as... Um, as a healer? A, as a healer, yes. My role as a healer is to give you a safe place to remember everything that you already know. Mm. You have everyone, every person has the memory and the knowledge that you need to move forward in your life to bring joy and bring uh, to help you make decisions that will help you move forward. Because we're not here to be miserable. No, no, we're here to be, have yes. happy, um, have fun. Expl I don't know how many times uh, my guidance and spirit stand there and just shake their heads at me and go, oh my God, what are you people doing? You should be having fun because, you know, <laughs> yeah. this is why we came, right? Yeah. To have fun and, and to remember the joy that, that we are and the love that we are and how we can help each other to um, become better people because we're here to be human beings, nothing else. That, well, yes, what's coming up for yeah, you exactly. then? There is oh, something going yes. to happen soon. On the 21st of April, I'm, I'm creating an event. It's called Connection to Your High Self. And I'm just showcasing my ability to be a psychic medium. There'll be communication with um, spirit, your angels, and it'll just be a day of fun and receiving love, really. Well, look, stay with us yes, until the end do. of the program I and we, we'll just have another chat about that later. Okay. Now, like we said before the break, we have a friend with a problem. Mm. <laughs> Who's your friend? My friend. Everybody's friend. Everybody's well, about to be everybody's well, friend. John Holmes, welcome to our time. Thank you, Malcolm. Thank you, Janice. Nice the to have problem you. is that you, you're a chair for an organisation that probably many people living in South Australia don't know about, mm. and certainly in the eastern states it won't affect them to the same way as it does here in South Australia. But it'd be interesting for us to know if there are organisations like yours, the Independent Arts Foundation, in the other states as well. Mm. So perhaps you could just explain to start with, what is the Independent in Arts Foundation? Was. Well, interestingly you mentioned across Australia because prior to the formation of the Independent Arts Foundation there was something called the Elizabethan Theatre Trust, which was across Australia. Which, if you're as old as Janice, you'd remember that. That's right, because she's more than 27, which is the age of the Independent Arts Foundation, which was formed after the Elizabethan Theatre Trust fell into a bit of a hole. Right. So, why, why did it fall into a hole? Um, management, finance and things like that. Mm. But, so, but with a name like Elizabethan Theatre mm, Trust, it mm. suggests that it had something to do with perhaps Shakespearean plays. And oh, things. yes, it did a lot of major work all, all across the country and it was really big and many people would know it as a, the major performance uh, uh, organisation. Mm -hmm. When it faltered here in South Australia, a group of people met, 400 in fact, met about 27 years ago and said, let's do something ourselves. And these were people who, many of whom are still members of, of the Independent Arts Foundation, they decided let's get an organisation together, raise money for the arts, or more particularly for if, um, emerging artists. Yes. Originally it was really about young emerging artists, but anyone who's beginning... What about arts, old really? emerging artists like us? <laughs> well... We haven't emerged for a while. Well, even people <laughs> as old as you, Malcolm, have applied. 28. 28, oh. that's right. <laughs> and Janice. But, no, it's exactly... That's what it's for. People who are beginning a career. And, um, I mean, some... I don't know if people know your background, Malcolm, but you did a lot of work in helping young people get ready for jobs, I maybe, in careers. Yeah, well, it's not so mm. much did. I still am, really. You still are. Mm. Well, you know, you're doing what I believe is mm. so mm. important. We all need to give back because otherwise, how will the next generation know well, where to go? exactly. And people can uh, train in the arts or be educated in all the performing arts or writing or design, filmmaking, television and so on. But where do they go when they've got that first training? Very so true. what we do is raise money, hence foundation, for young artists, you know, maybe graduates from school or somewhere, and they might want $1,000 to get a new microphone to make a film. They might want to um, uh, produce a show for Fringe. They might want to uh, enhance their 
career in any of the arts. Well, see, John, so we're surrounded we're here on the floor mm. with young people who are mm. studying mm. filmmaking mm. and television making, and they're probably not even aware that this no, exists. Exactly. So that's the problem I was referring These, to. Mm. Exactly. And that's one of our problems. One of our problems is getting known. Another is to encourage young people, like the people who are working, even not with you here in the studio, yeah. uh, makeup, uh, management, film, filming and so on, to say, I wouldn't mind doing something else. Mm. I wouldn't mind giving something a try. And I could do it with $1,000 or maybe I could do it with $2,000. So they put an application in and we fund them. We, we support about uh, $20,000 worth a year out in scholarships, Some one by a big uh, bequest and the others are from application twice a year. And that's a very important point mm. you just made, bequests, because... A lot of people who do have a little bit of dough mm. hidden away and mm. perhaps the family is not mm. there mm. anymore, mm. Mm. Um, giving, there's a lot of charities that you can sort of give to and obviously medical mm. research and things mm. like that are mm. important, mm. but mm. sometimes we actually forget how important the arts are to live a healthy, well, happy life. Exactly. And um, interestingly, the biggest supporter of the arts, I think probably always has been South Australia, has been the older and older population largely women as well and they've been wonderful supporters that's of the not arts. large women supporting no the arts slender because... women as well oh, <laughs> but, uh, excuse and, uh, my friend <laughs> that's okay. so um the other aspect of what we're doing is we're very aware that with 25 percent of our population being boomers as we call them um a research project was developed with uh, three people, one of whom was Frank Ford, the previous chair of the mm -hmm. Independent Arts Foundation. Greg. I think Frank's going to be in the program soon. Yeah, so that's good. wonderfully knowledgeable man, began, um, you know, all sorts of events in Adelaide. Um, like Greg the Mackey, Festival, exactly, yeah. exactly. Greg Mackey and another person called Vincent Burke did this massive research project that um, was funded by the government um, five years ago or so and came up with some what might be obvious findings. I didn't realise, well, I know now, of course, but I didn't realise that Vincent's work was mm. basically what you're using, that, that information that Vincent found. Which very much so. Have on the program too, I think. It'd be well, I think he'd be very, very interesting. Yeah. And found some, what might appear obvious to us now, but that when people get older, they still want to support the arts, but they want something that isn't too expensive, probably in a group, organised by somebody else, mm -hmm. maybe in the daytime, easy to get to. And you think, well, where are those things around? Mm. So that's what we're doing at this moment, is asking all the providers what they have to offer for group reductions and so on, and then trying to advertise that to our age, my age group. But everybody <laughs> organising this is a volunteer as well. That's oh, yes, an oh, yes, de to definitely. Make a oh, yes, point definitely. Because definitely. it's a yeah. not for profit one of Yes, that. yes. And uh, our funds come from membership, and we'd have about 280 members, many of whom are just members. They don't necessarily go to things. They're just happy to pay their membership fees. Which is to support much? the independent art. Independent arts. Foundation. So yeah. they pay their $30 or if yeah. they're going for two yeah. years or, or five years or it might be a reduced rate. It's not massive. But no, aside it's not from, massive. In fact, mm. it's incredibly reasonable mm. Mm. when you mm. think mm. of that. Yes. And aside from that, we have organisational things like film nights and literary nights uh, once a month, film nights once a month, and major events just to raise money so you can give it away. <laughs> Uh, to fantastic. young people. It so, is wonderful. Mm. It is. You do yeah. that. And um, you've had you had someone here. I watched one of your programs recently, Joanne Hartstall, who, yes, who so. was one of uh, the earlier recipients. And of course, she's and she's wonderfully... just done brilliantly well and won awards during yes. the local fringe, the Friday fringe. Muriel mm. Matters. That yes, was that's right. That's right. Her, and you had a wonderful interview with her recently. Mm. I saw. Mm. And so she's one of the many, many, many people, hundred or so people who have um, benefited from a small grant. I'm not, we're not talking big money, just little bits. John, to help sometimes it doesn't take big money. It just no. takes, I think, for an, uh, an emerging performer or an mm. artist or mm. whoever. I'm a bit funny about calling everybody an artist. We've dumbed down our language so much mm. that we don't talk enough about the performers, the dancers, the singers, the actors and no, so on. We no. call them all artists now yes. instead of saying what it is they actually do. But usually well, they do everything. Well, <laughs> well that's true. But it's a really good point because some people um, constrict the term artist to visual. Mm, yes. And so true. I talk about the performers. But yes. also there's a huge group of people who are not on stage or not on of film. Course. No. They're behind the, the film, they're behind the, the camera. Exactly. The writers, that's right. So they're yeah. the makeup artists, the, yes. Yes. the, the stage Designs, managers and so on. Yeah, and they are very, very important people, uh, producers, directors, and so some of those people mm. um, apply f to 
get some money to help them make a film or mm -hmm. whatever, yeah. to enter. I, I, mm. It's the same with television. People don't sort of realise um, how many people make a program like this come no, to no, Apart from no. the fact I'm working everything with my feet, yes. there are actually yes. Yes. people... You are very agile. Aren't you? I know, <laughs> I know. Yes, I can much. do it with nobody knowing. <laughs> and, um, in fact, in this episode, we've got uh, three new young cameramen yes, uh, we have. on the show, mm, 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 which is lovely. We've got mm. Lee on that camera there and we've got Ben on that camera there mm. and... Over there we've Mostyn. got... Mostyn. <laughs> yes. Well, it would be very interesting to know where they are in their version of their career. Are they still training or practising or are they They're ready to... They're still training. So and, are and they ready to... Our course. guys here are still training, yes. but yeah. you're right, because some people are mm. in that little crossover between mm. I've finished the degree or I've finished mm. the uni mm. course, mm. now I've got to look for the real job. That's, right. that's the really difficult and thing. And they might want some money to help them do that. They might want a flight somewhere or do a bit of training or a bit of equipment to do something. Or make something. Or make something, as that's Joe right. did, as that's Joe right. did. Exactly, uh, yes, The yes. girl who yeah. um, fell off the Hollywood sign was the big thing for her. Yeah. Mm, mm. And this current show will take her around the world again. It's mm. amazing. Mm. Well, We're just yeah. lucky that we yeah. have the contact with people mm. now like yourself mm. and we mm. can get more information mm. to pass mm. on to people mm. interested. Mm. So let's just wrap up. Sure, what we're talking sure, about. Your sure. problem is that not enough South Australians particularly know about mm, this. Mm. Uh, it's a bit of seeding for people in the eastern states. And like I said at the beginning, mm. if we know that you're involved with an organisation like that, let us know something about it so we can spread mm. the word. Mm, mm. Um, there are real advantages in joining the group because there are social events which mm. bring you together with people with mm. like mm. interests. Mm. Which mm. Exactly. Very and it's about humans. groups like interest at a time that suits them mm. and with transport to and from or friends to take them there. That's and that's the age profile. Of course we could be looking for, for a younger audience, but we're focusing currently on that 25% that we call the boomers. Well, mm. yes, mm. but Almost. we will always need to look at the younger audience because the boomers won't be booming forever. Oh, no, no. <laughs> we'll have to reinstigate our show together, Janice. <laughs> we will. We will. What did we call that? Oh, no, no. You and me. Our time, we called it. Gee, what a funny name to use. <laughs> We called it that time. Uh, John, it's been lovely to meet Thank you. you. Thank Just you, stay Thank with you, us mm, because nice um, I'm sure there's a bit more we can talk okay, about good. after this short commercial break. with Katerina Lenarchich and... And you said it right. John Holmes, <laughs> they are back. <laughs> Katerina, um, when we talked to you before, was there anything that you sort of thought about that we missed? Well, I just Or have you got any advice for us? Perhaps? OK, well, I'd just like to let everybody know that um, listen to your instincts, be proud of who you are and be your true self. Good advice. I have to do that all the time. Okay. <laughs> John, the same, the same question. Is there any advice you'd like to give to our friends watching at home? I'm not sure if it's advice or promo, but I think if people want to support the arts in a practical way, young emerging artists, then they might want to consider going to functions run by the Independent Arts Foundation, the IAF. To give um, your, their support. To give their support. Yeah. And, in, if you, and if you don't have that set up in your own hometown, wherever you're watching mm. this, um, maybe find some like-minded people mm. who mm. enjoy mm. going out to see shows, mm. whether they be art shows mm. or uh, whatever shows, mm. singing and dancing mm. shows mm. or mm. any other sort of thing. Mm. Because really, arts give to human beings a, the joy of living. Exactly, yes. Well, it's been lovely. It has. Meeting you both. Have you got any advice for us? Now you're a psychic. Quick. <laughs> <laughs> I'll find out later. <laughs> um, so um, just before we leave everybody, um, if they're interested in, in coming along to see what you're doing or to have a chat with you, mm -hmm. here's your Facebook page and we can communicate, or people can communicate through that yep. to find out more about you. And, John, um, the same with you. Do you have a Facebook page? Um, yes, I do, but the Independent Arts Foundation does as well, IAF 
Right, um, well, has put that up on the Facebook screen. Facebook well. page and uh, also website, of course. Thank you right. very much. We have and a surprise. Janice, it's we your have, birthday. It's your birthday. Congratulations. Oh. <laughs> so it's your birthday. We oh. wanted to do something special for you. Oh, wonderful. Oh, thank um, you. So we'd like to say happy, happy birthday, Mel. Happy birthday. Oh, yes. thank you very and you much. have happy oh. flow and flow. Oh, look. I, I couldn't fit that many oh, candles on the cake, me. though. So we're I'm just 40. Gonna... That's fine. <laughs> there you go. Fine. Blow out your candles. Oh, thank you very much. Uh. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay. There we are. Yeah. Oh, thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. How <laughs> lucky, thank you, because I know who would have organised this. Thank you very much. <laughs> These two girls, just quickly introduce yourself. What do you do on the show? We do hair and makeup. And what do you do on the show? <laughs> you, do you, do. you look after our guests. Yes, yes and, and it's lovely Sam. to have you. It's lovely. We really do have a genuine family here. All of the things that John was talking about before. Thank you, John. Thank you very much for Thank coming and sharing coming your story with us. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> and I'll be 26 tomorrow. <laughs> we'll see you soon, Take everyone. Take care. Keep yourself nice Bye till then. Now. Bye.